Welcome to this little screencast about render tasks inside of Newsletter Studio. Uh, I'm going to start this screencast by going to the Newsletter Studio page here, daily page, and say that uh, when uh, this is released, there's going to be a project that you can download, a template project, uh, to see how to implement a render task inside of Newsletter Studio. First thing is, of course, to explain what a render task is. So as you can see here, uh, we got a heading, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and insert the subscriber's name in here using the tool from the toolbox. Um, and as you can see, if we look in the source code here, the HTML for this letter, it's actually the brackets and the name thing here it looks the same as in the WISWIG editor. And when we click Save and Preview, it's going to replace that with subscriber's name. And that's actually a render task that's fired here. And what we're going to do now is to implement a render task that will replace the replace me tag. So um, I'm going to copy that first. Um, first of all, I'm going to open up this template project inside of Wish uh, uh, Visual Studio. This look looks like something like this. Um, it actually has a example implementation of a custom render task, but I'm going to skip that and go and create a new one just to show you how this works. So I'm going to call this my render task. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to inherit the cust uh, abstract class render task. Uh, and uh, using Resharper, you can always implement the member. Uh, so the only method that you really have to override inside here is the process pre-render, uh, which will fire once for each newsletter when the send out uh, is started. Uh, and it contains two parameters. It's the render result parameter and the uh, newsletter parameter, which give you access to uh, stuff like if we look at the newsletter, for example, uh, you can get the name, you can get the from, you can get stuff, different stuff, uh, actually. And the render result is the most interesting part. This is where we keep the subject and the message body. So if you want to uh, replace something in the subject, we can do that uh, using the subject. Uh, uh, value, uh, sorry, property, or if we want to replace something in the message body, we can do that with the message body property. Uh, we're going to work with the message body here, so I'm going to say that the message body is going to be equal to the render result uh, dot message body dot replace, and I'm going to add my things that, oh, sorry, uh, I'm going to go over to the browser again and grab the replace me tag. Put that inside here. And then say replaced by render task. Um, and if we save this, I'm going to go ahead and compile. Um, and I'm going to grab the compiled binaries from the bin folder of the project, uh, copy that, and then go over to uh, Newsletter Studio to the um, Braco installation. And in the bin folder, I want to paste it here. Uh, so that's one thing that we have done and then we're going to go to the Umbraco folder and look for Newsletter Studio and there's the web config file. Inside this file we need to create, uh, we need to tell Newsletter Studio to use our new render task. So I'm going to copy this li line and just add it here and say my render task. Um, so here we have to put the assembly name and the um, full name for the class. So the assembly name, if we right click and choose properties, we can find the assembly name here. I'm going to copy that, put that here, um, and then the assembly name. Uh, uh, this is the full namespace and the name of the class. So if we look at the my render task, it's called my render task, and it's inside the company.newsletter studio uh, namespace. So just uh, company.new.my render task. So now uh, we have actually done everything that we need to do to get this to work uh, and uh, when we click preview it's going to replace the replace me tag and add our text in there as you can see replaced by render task which is very good um, at some point you don't want the preview to do the full replace for example if we have the click tracking inside we don't want to have click tracking when you're in preview mode and you can accomplish that by actually override uh, another method called process preview. 
Uh, default is that process preview will call process pre-render. Uh, process preview only happens when you try to preview something. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do here is to copy this line uh, and say replaced in preview mode. So this will only. So now when we're trying to preview, if we build this, uh, the preview will only show the new text that we just added. So I'm going to go into the debug folder grab the binaries and put them in the bin folder of my newsletter studio or my sorry my bracket project so now when I'm trying to look at the, the preview it's gonna change to the new text that I was talking about the preview mode render task replaced by preview mode render task um, so and there's one thing uh, that I would like to show more about this uh, when you go back to Visual Studio, there's one more method that you could override if you wanted to um, show something unique for each and every subscriber that will um, receive this email. You can use the process unique item. This method will be called each and every time the render engine renders a uh, unique email. And this also has one more parameter, the email tracking item, which contains information about the unique item, a unique subscriber, example, the email, uh, the status, uh, and so on. Um, so what uh, we could do here is to, for example, we can say that, well, the render result dot message body is going to be equal to render result dot message body dot replace. And if we look in the product here, I added the unique thing tag. And this tag we're going to use here and say that we want to replace the unique thing with the email tracking item dot sub uh, sorry uh, dot uh, created date dot to string so it's going to just replace that with a date actually um, so I'm going to say that you could possibly uh, use the email from the email dot tracking item uh, and go ahead and go to the database and find something else that you want to insert here. I mean, an address or whatever, uh, um, whatever that would be, an invoice or I don't know. It really depends. Um, so, unique thing will be replaced by the create date of email, the email tracking item. Uh, okay. Well, let's build this. Let's go over to our uh, debug folder. Grab the binaries and go back into Visual Studio's bin folder, oh, sorry, Umbraco's bin folder, <laughs> and replace. And then when we go into Newsletter Studio and try to render this, what will happen is, unique thing won't be replaced. And that's because in preview mode, the only method that will be fired is the preview method, process preview. So here uh, we could replace this with something that's not so important. So I just want to let you know that in preview mode this will only be rendered in when you send out uh, newsletter studio will run this method once for the whole newsletter and then process unique item for each and every uh, subscriber. That's very important. Uh, so to demonstrate this we're actually going to use a very cool utility called PaperCut. Uh, PaperCut looks like this. It's very simple and you can download it from Complex. Uh, and it acts like an SMTP server. So uh, I'm going to open up my project here and go to the settings tab. And as you can see, we got the local host um, set up as the SMTP server. And if I try to test this connection, it will send an email to my fake SMTP here. That's very good. Uh, so, to really show the process unique item um, thing, we need to actually send out the newsletter. And I'm going to do that, send it to my default uh, mailing list. And go over to PaperCut and have a look at what's actually sent by the newsletter studio. And here you can see that the unique item is actually replaced here. So uh, this is how the render tasks works. And uh, one thing that you can do with a render task, for example, uh, I, I really want to show this. Um, so uh, is um, we're actually using the render tasks for a lot of things. And one thing is to replace the local links. If you link to something on your web page, inside of the HTML, there will only be a local link 
bracket, uh, as you can see, this is what's going to be saved. And the render task that's actually taken care of on that looks like this. So this is the code. As you can see, process pre-render. Um, this will all happen only once for each and every uh, email. Uh, there's no links that's unique for one subscriber. So we're doing a regex, and we're calling this method that's go that goes over to the umbracle that library that's a nice URL, and actually brings back the um, uh, URL. So that's how it works inside of Newsletter Studio as well. As you can see here, if we look at the source code, uh, sorry, if we look at the link. It's actually replaced. Uh, if you have any questions or want to know more, there's a forum here that you could use to ask questions or whatever. And don't hesitate to send me an email. Just go to enkelmedia.se. Thank you.